Hi, Mzwandi Lemsimanga. I'm a human at JGF. Hi, I'm Anshu Bulunga. I am a human at JGF. Ifikile imini enkulu. Welcome to the Humans of JGF, a JGF holiday special highlighting the brilliant minds behind our vision. And I'm Shanje, and I'm Vindotwa, and Lilo, Ilolo, Zange, Dalilo. Good people, I'm with my WhatsApp group. I am with my fellow colleagues who are part of the program team. We have Uancha Bulonga, the manager of the our program manager, and we have program officer Umzwandile. Simanga. Hi team. Hello, Matas. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Good. It's why you're I'm Pilila Konto. Yes! Welcome to JGF Amplified. And today we want to highlight the journey that you have taken uh, to be part of the organization. But what better way to start than from the beginning? I'll start with you, Mzwa. Where are you from? I tell everyone I'm a Gauteng Aleng, so I'm from Gauteng, born and raised I'm from the East Rand. So as they say in the Bible, the wise from the East. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm born and bred in Ekuruleni from Tsakane here. Yeah. Lovely. Ancha. Namatawa, I'm an African. Period. Originally from Eswatini, mm. but love, live, love and live in South Africa full time now. Lovely reason. stuff, lovely stuff. So we hear terms such as program manager and we hear terms such as program officer. I want you, Ansha, just to give us a broad understanding of what it is that you do within the organization. Sure. Thanks, Otawa. So as a program manager, it is my responsibility to make sure that our program delivery is on point mm. and that our candidate fellows and the beneficiary of our scholarship are taken care of yes. and that the team is held and that the team is enabled to do the things they need to do and that we create a community in the team to be able to realize our vision mm -hmm. also to be able to hold the candidate fellows um, to be able to also realize their vision as they go into the different parts, um, the pathways to impact. Yeah. Mzwa, program officer. There's a huge umbrella term. What does that term mean for you on the day-to-day -day basis of being part of the organization? Um, thanks, Matsabo, for that question. So from my side, I always look at it from a point of an analogy, being a boxing coach, right? Mm. So you are in the ring on the corner, and then the candidate fellows are the boxer. Mm. So my role is to ensure that they are prepared um, for the fights mm. and whenever they need to come back to the corner they can come back to me and then we have that conversation and then they go back to the fight hey rocky balboa i'm seeing it i'm seeing it so we are part of a teaching fellowship um and at times people may see the work that we do and not see us as people and i'd like for us to teleport teleport means going forward ne? means moving from one place to mm. another. So it can be backwards or forwards? Yes. Oh, I can. Let's teleport back to school. Get in again. <laughs> um, tell us um, your fondest, or not even fondest, Ancha, your earliest memory of school. Sure. I must think back. It's been a while, right? Hey, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. <laughs> My fondest memory is school. Mm. She was in grade five. Yeah. And I remember I was having a really difficult time at home. Mm. A lot was happening. And I had this teacher who taught me religious studies. And she noticed that something had shifted in me. Mm. And that morning, um, she called me out after the lesson and asked me to stay in the class and asked me what was happening. And I remember I'd actually left my sister sick at home. Mm. And from that moment on, that teacher held space for me and made sure that I was supported and I was able to even show up in class because she made sure that the things that I needed beyond being in class were taken care of. Um, and that was Miss Simpson. So 
And so I remain eternally grateful for her. The kind of work that teachers do really holistically for the enrichment of children really can never be quantified. Mzwa, your earliest moment being at school. So I went to school when I was, uh, I think, four, ten, and five. Yeah. Um, so I think my memory that I sort of liked um, was a bad day, right? So we used to be the top ten students. Um, this was in primary school, and then used to get those gold stars for getting 50 out of 50 and 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 i think as a group we started to be complacent mm. and then one day like the teachers just called us and back then corporal punishment was still allowed right yeah. so they then uh, black sent <laughs> us um for being complacent because i think that's the thing generally that um sometimes in life you find yourself being comfortable mm. with the fact that yeah I'm still doing good I'm still passing but theirs was and it was not just one teacher a group of them right <laughs> so but it was a thing where people were concerned mm. about us not fulfilling our potential mm. and I think that's the role that teachers do play mm. um, to ensure that people reach their maximum potential so although perhaps them at the time the only way was to uh, express it that that was the only vocabulary that they had yes. to express care. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the intention still remained. Uguzi, they wanted what was best for us, and as you know, sometimes it's a carrot, sometimes it's a stick, and then at that time it was a stick. So I, I want us to to play a quick guessing game since it's the three of us here. So I, I want you to take a wild guess as to what kind of learner Ancha was in high school, <laughs> particularly. And Ancha, you tell us if Umzwa is hot, cold, or digi digi Go for it, Umzwa. I think she's she would have been the same <laughs> okay. as she is now. Um, so I think for one, uh, she would have been a very determined person. Mm. So it's one of those people who would have been chances are teachers' pets as well. Mm. So I think um, very focused, always homework, always done. Mm. Um, yeah, and, and, and caring and assisting other students as well mm. um, with homework and things like that. Um, but maybe we have to be sad again. Aja, is Umzwa hot, cold? Oh, lapis pagatinu digi digi. Swa swa. Hot. On the money. On the money. the teacher's pet. <laughs> okay, so instead of teacher's pet, what other characteristic which wasn't captured by, by Mzwa did you hold in high school? So in high school, I held leadership positions. Sure. And it was that kind of leadership, servant leadership. Mm. So now I reflect back, I realize it started then where I'd be there picking up the litter you know, with the students, but also if you did something wrong, I'm not going to go by Isa. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Let's sort it out before it gets to the powers that be. Yes. It does get to that. Yes. So I want you to do the same for Mzwa. In high school, this guy who got stars and then twist twist gets blixomed. <laughs> How did he turn out in high school, do you think? So I'd say in high school, Mzwa is probably... One of the smartest in the class mm -hmm. always made sure that they did their homework mm. and they actually asked very challenging questions of the teachers and potentially even suggested different ways to deliver certain content <laughs> um, and maybe even taught some of that to their peers um, overall a great students that other students looked up to so hot Hot, diggy yeah. diggy. Hot, hot, hot. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about Anja's description? Um, so, you say that it's it's hot, hot, hot. What other elements um, were not captured in An in Anja's guess of who you are? Um, so, in high school, 
Uh, I dress really nice. <laughs> okay. Oh, please. I mean, yes. Also, let me tell you, in this organization, top 10 academically, top 10 at work, top 10 with Ukotini. Yes. So, Ukotini in this household. So, I mean, even when we were wearing uniform, right, uh, I owned a blazer. And in my school, it wasn't compulsory to wear one. Mm. But it's something that um, I took pride in, in terms of how... I arrived and how people would see me. Um, but yeah, I think everything else is true. Uh, I was actually offered a teaching job when I came to fetch my metric results from school. Wow. Um, yeah, so part of me has always known that I should have been in the classroom teaching because that's something that I actually did do. Um, so I'd go to my Saturday school and learn, then come back and teach some classes in our high school year. That is quite interesting to know. That's really interesting to know. When speaking about teachers, Mzwa, who was your favorite teacher? Yeah, there's a lot of them and for different reasons, mm. right? Um, like I said, I went to school when I was <laughs> for turning five. Mm. So it's been a very long journey for me. I went to about three primary schools and one high school. Mm. So, yeah. So I had a great English teacher, uh, Mr. Matlangu, uh, may he rest in peace. So he sort of put the love for literature for me. Um, and I was one of those kids who was reading in class. Mm -hmm. You know, when people are Funda Tembi, I was Tembi, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's things like that where, um, and then people started giving me the nickname Shakespeare. Okay. <laughs> um, with English literature, poetry, I was really good at it. Um, and then Miss Kaladin uh, for, surely Mrs. Kaladin for physics. So I think I was really also good there. So yeah, um, those are the things that in high school, those who put that mark and love for specific things and how to do things. Like Ancha mentioned, I have a different way of looking at things for the most part. So we'd always have those conversations. They'll be like, you should have answered this like this. And I'm like, is it wrong or not? And then like, yeah, you are right. But then I'm like, okay, cool. We are winning most of them. Mm. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And your favorite teacher, Ancha? So, so much like Mzwa, I'm thinking of a couple of them. Mm. Um, but I'm going to mention two. So the one, Mr. Lamini VB, he taught me chemistry and biology in high school. And he was very strict. So the pass mark was 70%. Anything below that, then you got blackened. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so I, st I went to school when there was still corporal punishment. Mm. Um, but what I loved about him was that even though we're in a school where you still have lucky positions for the report, in terms of performance, so you had position one, and that's the highest. Um, he would challenge us to compete with ourselves. Um, and he would challenge us to benchmark ourselves with the schools that were doing really well. Mm. So schools that actually look at your individual performance for each term. And actually say, this is how you've improved, and this is how you can continue improving. And so I remember just those teachings about how one needs to push themselves forward mm. and not look around what others are doing because that might not be your standard um so always just reaching for the best and then the the second one um she never actually got to teach me um but she she's a great teacher um she taught uh, home economics and i was taking our culture mm. but it's amazing how she identified in me what i needed just like someone to really speak to about things and she reached out and even up to, to this day She's one of the people that when I'm going through something, I can text um, and then she can give me advice. And most of the time, it's exactly what I need at that point. Mm -hmm. And she challenges me. Um, and even beyond just my own pursuits, but also as a parent, I'm able to reach out to them. So love that that one with her just has transcended me just being in the classroom as a learner yeah. of school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, cling, 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 it's after school. We are in metric. What is Umzwandile seeing for himself after, after he takes off that glorious blazer that he wore every day in high school? So 
for me it started off as um when we wrote our last paper and this other teacher comes to me and says we are f- officially unemployed <laughs> so it, me. it really hit me at that time like yo um but i don't think i had the consciousness at the time to think about the level of unemployment in the country and 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 i think i was more what will i do what would my impact be mm. and i think at that time i really fell in love with human beings i don't know how um so by that i mean when i was in high school i did accounting computer science maths um and physics right mm. so there was I, i didn't do your bio i didn't do history so there wasn't anything that said to me i will fall into the humanity space right because i had those options to do computer science accounting and 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 but there's a thing that said no man i like working with people although i didn't know the what hence i thought um i'm going to do law or journalism because it included a lot of that and for me again the law was more hey, it's a respected profession you're going to mm. get some money and i love law right um i even just from perspective of watching it and it includes a lot of different thinking um and finding evidence i think that's also why i love physics right and eventually <laughs> funny enough i studied political science psychology and um philosophy and i mm. did very very well in philosophy um because i think it grounds everything else unfortunately you can't get a job as a philosopher <laughs> right. yeah but um that's what i saw for myself working with people and that's why i think i'm living the dream having to continuously work um in developing the human potential sure after the trick what was written in the stars for ancha <laughs> so i don't think it was a written in the star situation mm. cuz i'm done now I need to study and make money um yeah. but I knew that I wanted to work with people and at that stage I thought so when I completed grade 12 yeah. I the plan was I was going to go study at the university and you're going to uh, at the point I thought I wanted I was going to become a neurosurgeon right yeah. um become a doctor and you know inspired by Dr Ben Carson and life wasn't going to turn out that way right because i realized at that point that it's it's not going to happen as simply as it was and the one thing is that when i completed grade 12 i had not applied for university studies oh, um, hey, outside take. of eswatini mm. so i had applied in eswatini mm. but i knew that's not where i was destined to go mm. and of course i needed to be practical about the fact that my family is expecting me to study further and then work um but i had no idea what that would be if it's not near surgery right um and so i then got the opportunity to um for the of the Ellen Gray Over Foundation scholarship um and it allowed me an extra 2 years to find myself mm-hmm. um and in that finding myself what i got exposed to was my love for people um and i knew that i wanted to do a qualification um of course not near surgery because i realized that's not me <laughs> um but also just in a space where it allows me to connect with people and that was through um being involved in community service and so i you know went back um to okay so what can i do and part of that was then talking to university counselors and finding out that oh yeah you can do science yeah. and you can figure out what that looks like in working people so that's what i went up doing but you know in the end it turned out that i'm not doing the thing that i actually don't have a degree for but have a heart for oh i love that i love that and what a great segue to the next question which is that we as people in the organization we have had we have multiple phases and faces that have led us to this point and shall take us through the various stages and life career choices uh that you've made that has contributed to us having you as our program manager today sure 
That is not an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome How to JGF Amplified. How far I go? <laughs> um, so when I went to university, as I mentioned, I was in clear that I'm going to study science, the last science for last people. Um, and I went to study at Rose University. Mm-hmm. And, and thanks to you know the advice of our CEO, Julian, um, who was actually part of the Alan Gray Overs Foundation then, really, really helped mm-hmm. um, in the decision. And when I went to Rhodes, it's like, okay, cool. So I'm going to study environmental science, um, geography, and wanted to do geology because I thought it had a lot of money. I wanted money. Yeah. Um, but then with the degree, I then also did a lot of community service. Yes. And that's what then taught me, the, gave me the skills to continue to then play to my strengths, which is really uplifting and unlocking young people. Um, people's best potential, right? Um, and so when I graduated in environmental science um, honors, um, I decided I want to work in the space where I am uplifting young people and supporting them become their best selves. Um, and so I started then off um, with a job at Stud Trust, mm. and there I was a, a bursary support officer. So got to mentor young people to also manage the finances. I did not like that side of it, right? Yes. Um, because they need to be accountable um, for like all the money. I just wanted to do the people things, but really grateful that I got to learn those skills quite early on. Um, and that was in, in 2019. And six months there, six months from then, I became a coordinator in the space and I got to work with the alumni so that was also a growth point because it's like okay now you get to do what you love but what you know what's what does that really look and within six months within six months um but when i arrived at study trust um jdf had already um been uh, had already started had been started right Mm. um had already been born and i knew i wanted to go work at jdf i knew from the beginning and i used to tell people when I leave here, I'm going to JTF. Um, and so the opportunity is presented itself in 2020, 2020. Yes. Um, and then I applied, um, program officer. And then well, when I started at JTF, I was just like, this is it now. You know, I'm going to really focus on being the program officer and really give the best support to my candidate fellows. Um, but in that, the JGF, there is a culture of collaboration. So you get to work on more than just what your job description says. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of potential for growth in that. And that has meant that in time of a year and a half, when the opportunity presented itself, um, the opening of the program manager role, mm-hmm. put up my hand mm-hmm. um, and, and gave it my best shot, you know, as God would have it. And then I got the job, and this is where I'm at now. I'm really excited for the next phase and, and journey. And how lucky are we to journey with you on this here phase? Congratulations again for Thank the you. program manager uh, post Ansha. Thank you. So, uh, faces and the phases that have contributed to this philosopher. That never was, let's just put it that way, (laughs) who gets to be the mind, the energy, the muscle behind the Muhammad Ali's of our our organization, the form of candidate fellows. Okay, I think my journey started at university. Mm. So there's what they call graduate recruitment week. So I go there and there are different companies looking at students who they want to get into their programs via internships and, and, and. And then I remember I was there and I'm asking these people, I am doing humanities, I'm doing humanities, I'm doing humanities. And everyone was like, go speak to so-and-so, go speak to so-and-so. And none of them had any programs. And I think it was second year, yeah. And I'm like, yo, what did I do, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Did I choose the right career? Because if all these organizations that are here and are hiring, no one is, or anyone has, no one has an opportunity for a person who's doing humanities, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a huge um, wake-up call for me. But I guess the wake-up call was more of, 
if no one was there to guide me, I need to go back and create space and guide other people. So then I started my organization, um, which is Black Stars Program, which is an NPO. So through that, um, funny enough, the stars now in the studio. <laughs> um, but the reason I named it Black Stars was not just because of the color of my skin, but when you're looking at stars, there are stars that are named and discovered, but yeah. there are stars that are still yet to be discovered. Mm. So those stars still remain as stars, mm. right? So then it was black stars, the stars that are yet to be discovered. Sure. So then we started um, doing career exhibitions and, and things like that in my community. And from that, you now get there's community newspapers that pick up stuff. Hey, these guys are doing great work. Yeah. Um, the mayor's office calls you for breakfast, what, what. And then you're like, okay, cool, man, there's a career in this thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then from doing those career expos and whatnot, we established a community radio station in where I'm from, currently employs over 30 people. Mm. So then that sort of led me in the space of, creating opportunities for others, right? Um, then graduated, uh, my first job, I think the, the, the assumption on the day they told me I won't get a job, right? Looking at those people at the graduate recruitment week, I was like, I need to create my own job. So that's the um, NGO. Then we started the radio station. And then through that, you get exposed to a variety of other opportunities, which led us running an organization um, at YFM. We had a show, but it was not just a radio show. It was a show and a platform to share opportunities with young people around bursaries, around funding and things like that. And yeah. we got to engage with different stakeholders, government, etc. But I think the intention has always been around empowerment. Then my first job, I worked at the Gauteng Primary Language and Mathematics Strategy. So our current um, M&E partner at JGF was my first employer, JET, mm. the, the Joint Education Trust. So that's where I worked and we were seconded to the MEC's office to run that project. Um, and I was a project administrator. Unfortunately, any legacy project is linked to the political term of the MEC or whomever. Then that particular project was coming to an end. And then I went to work as a academic support coordinator at Tomorrow Trust, which mm -hmm. manages bursaries. And I think, I, like I said, I love that ability to help people realize their potential. So I worked with... I think 100 students at Tomorrow Trust managing um, their academic potential and putting that in. And then I feel at some point, as I said, I've worked in education and, and, and. So there was an opportunity now for me to go and be at a different organization, still supporting young people's capacity. But this was a program where I first came in as a beneficiary of the program, mm -hmm. which provided training. So that was Activate. And then I went to work at Activate Change Drivers as a literacy coordinator. That then led to a whole different path. Um, so I gave me an opportunity to even sit at the National Reading Coalition in a reference group with organizations which I respected in the education space. Mm -hmm. So what led me to JX, right? is that respect for the people who work in these organizations. So I remember I would almost talk um, egg off on social media, looking mm. at the people that work there. I'm like, hey, man, this is the kind of space that I want to be in. And then when the opportunity came, I then applied um, to be at JGF. And you can always say it's come full circle because when I left high school, the job that I was offered was to be an educator. Mm. But now I get to work and produce more educators because I could have been in the classroom and there could have been one Mzwandile, but now I'm there to help create more. Love that, love that. I'm listening to you, to your guys' stories about JGF and I'm so tempted to tell mine. Mine is so incredibly diff different, um, less inspiring. <laughs> um, 
I am at the sociology department, I'm sure as you know, the Edward University. Um, I'm sitting there, stressed, doing my sociology paper, and I'm like, hey guys, is all this English going to get me money? Because of, I don't know what sociologists do. I just realized that I really like drama and sociology. Sociology is a study of people. And obviously, drama and performance study is what it is. I'm just like, what is all this English going to amount to? I ran to my lecturer in a panic attack. And I'm like, Togo, what am I going to do, Togo? Dizofela up and did English. I can't die just speaking English. Togo, save me. It's four o'clock. Togo says, this, there's a, there's a, uh, here's an application to work at a place where I think you'd be good at. Mm. The application's closed today at five. When last did I ever touch my CV? Let's start there. Because I've been speaking English, being nice and cute and beneficial, and, 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 and I've been doing great at this. And I sent out this application form, and here we are today. We all have different stories that are contributing to the greater, diverse, uh, nuanced voice that is the Jake's Kabbal Fellowship. And with that said, Ansha. Utago was right. Utago was right. Shout out to Dr. <laughs> Supungu. Shout out to Dr. Supungu. Thank you so much, Toko. Oh, and, to, and to think that Utago was just at his office in and out. He was going to go to the gym. I just found him by luck. I'm just like, you know what? If it's meant to be, it's meant yeah. to be. <laughs> um, so speaking about the narrative of JGF, how does the the vision and the values of JGF, Ancha, align with your personal vision uh, and convictions? Sure. Like I get to start the difficult questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> lead the way, right? Lead, lead the, the way, the way. <laughs> <laughs> So having, so being a, an, an Alan Gray fellow has meant that I've been on a journey similar to those of our candidate fellows. Mm. And the values of the organization, um, because of how JGF was founded, right? Mm. It's not foreign to what I was used to as a candidate fellow at Alan Gray. It's like something that I can sign up to. Yes. Like really caring about pe- our people mm-hmm. at every level. Everyone matters, mm. right? Just, and how human the organization is. That you're able, you know, to look across the room and you know that you can connect with people at levels beyond work. Um, and, you know, the, the, the values that, you know, integrity, just knowing that it's not a thing that's special to certain people, but it's something that is embodied in, in the organization. Yeah, yeah. And just the sense of care, really genuine care, you know, Whoever you reach out to, if someone says they care, you can trust that. And it's something that I've even seen with our candidate fellows where they take care of each other. They have yeah. each other's backs. And so this way of just the organization, I believe, exists beyond just the name. But we're seeing it come to life in the way that, you know, individuals carry themselves. Like, we are a brand, yeah. you know, um, so beyond just being in the organization, when you walk out and say you're from JGF, people associate us with, you know, excellence, mm. with quality, with, you know, vision and really hard work. Yes. And we, we see that in our team and we see that as well in our candidate fellows mm. as they journey through their different um, journeys and also just the realness and vulnerability, which is a strength, mm. right, on one's journey, um, to be able to actually say, you know, I'm not okay and know that you're cared for. And, and that's something that we, as program officers, right, hold the space for candidate fellows to be able to say that. It's amazing that in their own way, they're showing us that we're doing something right. Mm. And so signing up to a space where I'm seen and that I'm heard but also that I'm trusted. Mm. I know that I can do what I can do, but if I can't do it, there's someone who can help me do it Um, because we support each other and we hold each other. There's never been a time where it feels that, you know what, you're actually alone. Um, When you ask for help, it's there. When it's not, we'll create um, the help for you. Or reach out beyond Mm. us to be able to make sure everyone is held and supported. Mm. Mm. 
so there is a code, right? Um, I think I, I, I would before, before, before you continue, <laughs> in this organization, there are two code masters. One, they will give you a quote in Chinese, our CEO, Julia Chiu. Second, the philosopher, Zuan Dile, Ignatius Musimanga. What is the quote for today? We are honored to hold a quote of yours, actually, to be honest. No, man. Um, and and I, I think I'm going to paraphrase it, right? Mm. But it speaks about if you want to plan for 100 years, mm. um, plant rice or something like that. But if you want to plan for thousands of years, you must educate children. Sure. Um, so I think it's very important for me in that human potential for in in that quote in realizing it so working at jake's the alignment for me is the unleashing and investment in the human potential particularly in the teaching profession because there are lots and lots of bursaries out there that do invest um in creating other professions mm. but at jake's we are looking at teachers yeah but not only we are saying okay cool because you qualify based on the university ap score but we are looking at we want the best to teach yeah. so what does the best look like right we currently have 40 of those in different classrooms across the country mm. so for us as an organization we are saying a person whom would generally be advised not to be an educator because of the potential that they possess. Mm. But they make the choice to say, I'm going to use this extremely great gift that God has given me to give back and plow back, like we said, educate children. Because it's beyond just me as an individual in what I can earn as a teacher, but it's the role and the fulfillment of purpose. So me personally, I have my own, um, like Tabumpi, I'll quote myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a credo um, that says, it's the steps we take today that get us there tomorrow, mm -hmm. quite simply. So we need to take action towards a future that's not certain. And at Jake's, we have a thing that says we look into the future to where the park is going, right? And we play to that. So it's us looking into the unknown, the undetermined, but we're saying we're charting our way to that path. And that vision is so great because, like I said, we are planning for more than the time would be here. Right, so our impact will be echoed through ages because of that value of looking into where the park is going and not playing to where we are at. So I think my alignment is that I'm taking the steps today that will get us somewhere. Yeah. And again, it's not just for us with our potential and looking at our current earnings, but it's our contribution that will outlive us. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Now, our candidate fellows, as we all know and hold the sentiment that they are the North Star of our organization, they're the reason, period, right? What about the candidate fellows that we have on Zwandile gives you the assurance that South African classrooms are in safe hands? I would say the intention so there's one thing to just go with the flow, right? Mm -hmm. There's an opportunity that exists and you are just there. So these are young people who could have been anything under the sun. Yeah. And they chose to go into the teaching profession, knowing very well of the challenges that could exist or are existing in that space. But they went against the norm. So... A person who's determined will do more, right? So I believe that our candidate fellows are, and the ones that will be 
are, are great teachers and educators because like Ancha mentioned earlier, we have modeled care for them. So when they're in the classroom, it's beyond just grades, right? Mm. It's looking at the actual human spirits. Mm. So I believe that there, I think the, <laughs> I'm thinking about it now, the famous question that we ask, and I think you sort of also asked it at Jake's, is who's your favorite teacher and why? Yeah. And I guess the intention from our candidate fellows is to become their children's or learners' favorite teacher, mm. right? And as you can know, that a favorite teacher is not just about the subject. As you had with Anja, you might have said, okay, cool, this was the subject and these are the results that we got, but it was how the teachers invested in us and saw us as human beings and mm -hmm. embraced our authenticity. So with the intention that our candidate fellows have, with the care that they possess, and the potential and capacity that they have. Because like I said, we have golden key mm -hmm. um, candidate fellows. So it means they are amongst the best of the best in their degrees. Mm -hmm. And most of them are not only doing a B.Ed., right? They are doing a B.Sc., a B.Com. So they could be anything under the sun, but they are choosing to be in the classroom mm -hmm. to make a much greater impact than for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm. Ancha, what reassures you that our candidate fellows are the hands that are going to hold, mold, and reassure children mm. in classrooms? For me, it's their their openness to growth. Yeah. Um, the candidate fellows that I've had the privilege um, to support in the, the last almost two years now I've marveled at the growth that has happened um, in, in individuals yeah. and, and reflect on that with them honestly. I'm like, sure, when I met you, you know, this is the kind of person I met. <laughs> and then now we're at the end of the year and this is the person now I'm meeting. Like it's, it's like I'm meeting you again and I'm meeting a different person who's lived life in some way. And I believe that for us to continue you know, doing the things that we envision you know, as individuals, we need to be open to growth um, and be open to ch being challenged because our candidate fellows are put in spaces where they get to be challenged um, you know, on what they actually hold as the truth. And sometimes you're like, hmm, you know, yeah. actually let's interrogate that. And I've found that they open to being challenged and open to them growing and where they have they see that actually this is not working for me you know they come back and you know they're better person reflected and that's one big thing we at jgf really value and make sure that reflection is at the core of what we do yes and our candidate fellows by nature of being part of this community are uh, we hope can continue to be reflective and i believe that that's one thing that's going to continue to support them um, in becoming the best that they want to become in the classroom, but also most importantly, solving for South Africa's most pressing education needs in many aspects, maybe as social entrepreneurs, educational leaders as they grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as you all know, our hashtag for the year, hashtag be a teacher, if there is someone who is listening to this podcast and there is an amber within their soul and they're like, I want to be a teacher, Ancha. What words do you have for them? The important thing is the fact that you've figured out you want to be a teacher. Yeah. Stay on the course and be intentional. And it's not going to be easy. There's no profession that's easy. But what's important is your why. Mm. And so if you figure that and stay on that, there's nothing stopping you. And do not let yourself stop you. Mm. Don't let anything stop you. Yeah. Stay on the course. Was that it? It's a very difficult one, right? Because um, I think we believe it's quite linear. Right, mm. so we think you're gonna move from one to two, 
But if you've managed to find yourself um, wishing to be in a classroom, it shouldn't be one, a fallback career. Yeah. So it shouldn't be a, because I couldn't do this, now I want to do this as a cop out, right? Yeah. But if it's life redirecting your steps, then pursue it. If it's you finding your calling after traveling different aspects, I think we are all have mentioned how we were led to Jake's. We didn't unless Ancha did write it down because <laughs> it was part of her plan, right? But mm -hmm. unless you are sure, like in your heart, that you want to serve and be in a classroom because that role is way bigger. Mm -hmm. um, I would even put it as a saving lives, right? Yeah. Because you are saving people at a point where they might not even be at, in danger yet. Mm -hmm. So your investment and what you do with them, to them, as you are molding and shaping them, ultimately has consequences beyond the four walls of that classroom. So I think you need to think in that way that have been called to make an impact that will, in effect, I'm going to throw a pebble into this thing and it's going to have ripples of change that are mm. going to be waves of change. Mm. So you must think beyond that one classroom. Mm. Yeah. Sure, sure. Good people, thank you so much for joining us and honoring us with your voices, your, your wealth of wisdom. And honestly, as you both iterate that South African classrooms are safe as a result of our candidate fellows, I would like to extend to you that our program is safe because they are individuals such as yourselves who are not just in it, but in it for the win. There is a deep sense of investment. I say this as a colleague. I don't know how many people in this country get to wake up. Um, people who work get to wake up knowing that Ewe Ungo is at level 10,000, but fundamentally, I am not alone. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not alone. Like, it's not, and we're not going to romanticize that things are tough. Mm. Um, and it's tough because we are doing the kind of work that we're doing mm. that is all encompassing. We can't be selective about that. But to know that when I'm ready to articulate my goal, there's going to be someone there to listen. Um, and there's going to be someone to carry the load. So, WhatsApp group Yam, thank you for coming through. It's good to share space with you in the WhatsApp, on the field, <laughs> doing the work that we do. It's nothing else but a pleasure. And after you, team, uh, depending from where you come from, you will know her as Ntombe Kaya Nyati. Or you'll just know her as Kaya Nyati. <laughs> she will be joining us. Um, what fond memory do you have of her or with her that you'd like to share with us? I'll start with you, Acha. Sure. I love how Kaya is very, like she's always there, man, ready yeah. to to engage mm -hmm. and engage with humor, mm -hmm. even when it's a serious matter. It throws yeah. us off, though. Right? It does. <laughs> it's like, wait, is she serious? She's she what's going on. You know? But I love that she's consistent in yes, that. So yes. You know she will always deliver in that. Yes. Um, and there's never a dull moment with Kaya. Yeah. So I really love that. Absolutely. So? So I was raised um, by a lot of closer women. Okay. <laughs> okay. So with her, she reminds me of the matriarchs in my family, mm. um, people who are able to be firm in their own belief and assert mm. um, themselves. So I think every time when you look at her, you get that strength to yeah. do stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think it's one of those things where you, when you look at how she does things, you're like, hey man, um, forgot who said this, but it was more of throw yourself at the world and it will catch you. So yeah. I think she embraces that. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Shout out, Valesa. 
shout out. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Team Yetunani. As you know, the conversation continues on our social media networks. It is Jake's Calva Fellowship Everywhere. I'm not going to look at TV who's going, who's always correcting me on our social media handles. If you want to know who we are, just go Jake's Calva Fellowship on Google. It will show you everything that you need to know. Um, and as per usual, uh, stay connected with us and we will see you in our next episode. Bye-bye.